leaves and break me with smoke Holds me till I can't breathe And his eyes tell me things his mouth can't achieve Me, I feel a thousand different ways Hey team, how are we going for the sound before we bring on the camera? Give us a I've thumbs up if you can hear my, my voice. And my shoulder and my way. You see, I'm in nature, but I do bad things. And when you want me, looking good there, mate. Well, I'll be gone. So talk to me. Good day, Aussie bloke. I need your number, mate. I need your number so we can have a See, chat. I'm here to help. Because I've got mine. Oh, won't you look for me on a different day? I hate to turn it off, team, because I actually quite like that song. I look to my art list. My royalty-free music, and I absolutely loved it. It put me in a soothing area as the sound got me to the stage. This computer was about to be rocket man. Sinaj, how you going, mate? I hear you're thinking about getting a haircut. Don't do it, because different is better than good. And if you want to look like you're out of the next pirate of the Caribbean movie, and so be it, sir. Waving that hair. And Sinaj, at the moment, you're on the guest list for our... Uh, uh, next Zoom call where we need four people, Brady Bunch style. G'day team, how are we going? It's Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz and I have a video here today which might be confusing and almost a little bit offensive to some. And what that is, is as the title says, is the chaos of the Australian Army combat soldier more peaceful than what it is to be within the civilian realms? I've got a video to put on here right now to absolutely bring the clarity to what we're talking about so that people can't misinterpret, so people understand we live in different worlds and the military, the path of the warrior slash the soldier, it's different. Not always better, but when I bring home to you the fact that people, no matter how old they are, with army service, never get beyond it. It doesn't necessarily define them, but it puts them in a fraternity that they'll forever be given respect regardless of their personality, especially on Anzac Day, Remembrance Day, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, Armistice Day. Every country's got a version. There must be something about wearing the jersey that just makes people think it's worth it. And you never hear someone say, you know what, I wish I hadn't have been a brain surgeon. But you don't hear people say it about being a soldier either. Even those on their dying day. So let's uh, have a look at this. I can see Simon Powell, lovely Lauren, who's helped calm the beast. Carl, back from IETs. You know, we've got William down below that has just got his OSB sorted. We've got so many people that have got their fitness cards. I can't even hold one up because they're all out. And I've got to make some more tomorrow. Moñana, Spanish for those that don't look at Dora the way I do and understand that Spanish is a culture and a food and a music and a well-being place to be. So here we go. I'm going to put this video on and I hope that you enjoy it. It goes for nearly seven minutes. But I've made it entertaining for you and I hope you appreciate it. And this is my analysis on in or is the chaos of the combat soldier where the true peace is? So here we go. A little bit of understanding here, Kaz. Let's go. When we get one more person on stuff, here we go. Hope you enjoy. What do you think you're doing? Hey, hey, get out of there. It's a captain's chair. Rat. <laughs> Doesn't get easier the further I run. It 
It's hard to carry the weight of what I've done. I am speaking from experience. Going. It is Kaz from the Trenches with Kaz, and I'm here to ask you, how can it possibly be that the combat-trained soldier finds more peace in the chaos of serving the nation, in being abroad, in being in Tully, in existing in adverse conditions for prolonged periods of time with no comfort, with no internet, without no phone, without the good foods, the things that he loves and the people, and even their dog. How can that be more peaceful? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you know that where you are is non-political. You understand where you are in the chain of command. You're not fighting over that. It is not contested. You understand what the mission is. You're expecting it to be hard. Moments of absolute, uh, what would we say? Moments of 100% red line activity, followed by long periods of waiting, anticipating with nothing occurring. Boredom. But what can you do? All you can do is turn to your left or right and make conversation old school conversation with your battle buddy that's beside you. Understand that every day will be different and when it is more of the same, it might be harder, it might be easy, but you're getting paid. If you get hurt, it's free medical and it's done during workouts, fitness, hard, daily, in work hours, dental, work hours, time off. So often we find that with the six weeks off that you get at the end of the year, the two weeks at Easter, the two weeks in September, etc., rough ballpark figures, that no sooner do you give your pledge to your family to be there, to spend time with them, but you're already itchy as hell to get back on the road and go and spend time with your family, second family, your compadres, because there's no politics. You've got dark humour swearing, talking about the things you can't talk about. There's no tiptoeing on the family freak eggshells that you need to keep away from certain topics. It's all, you know, basically on and above board. So that is why I could imagine there's, there's no falsities in the military. You're all there for the same reason. You're guided by normally the same capitalistic, adventure-seeking, brotherhood loving, patriotic fueled lifestyle, but can't exactly tell you why. It's because we love the country, it's because we love the adventure, is because we love our mates. Or we just like knowing that diversity of activity is more um, important than equity and diversity in a fake civilian landscape where you are told to believe in something despite the fact that you know it's full of shit. You just have to get do it, you have to get told this is the way we have to think. To fit in today's HR department society, I don't understand it. You know, when you go overseas for six months, eight months, a year, whatever, no sooner do you get home, then you wish you were back with your buddies. Drinking Coke in a glass bottle that's already had a thousand customers. Yeah. Getting up Ravelli, tasting the countryside, the air, the different people, the cultures, the activities, and the, the smell of the spices and the pungent smell of the people. It's about making stories. It's about living life. It's about having an adventure. Everything in the civilian world is saving up their time, saving up their shekels to do. You're getting it not just for free, but you're being paid to do it. Hanging out of a helo at high altitude with the doors kicked open, hanging out. You know, with someone behind you giving you pride. Thanks, Trevor Cameron. Scared shitless of heights is Kaz. I want you to have a life that is different. I don't want you to say, I want to go to university. I want to hear, this is my dream, but I've got to go to university to get there. STEM, maybe that I want to go and I want to be a carpenter. I want to be a boiler maker. I want to be a dentist. No one wants to be a dentist, it just pays well. I want to be a vet. 
Yeah, that makes sense. You know, people love the animals most want to go where they see the most animal suffering. Huh, confusing. I want to be a doctor. Why? Spend a life researching, reading books, smelling of rich mahogany. I don't know. It's up to you, life journey. But don't get to 51 years old, where I am now, and then look back and say, I wish I'd done something different. Because I'll tell you now, life is about living, and life owes you nothing. Squat. So get out there, live your life, and remember where you go for an apprenticeship, where you go for university, where you go for TAFE, that's just the conduit to get you to something that you'd better get right. Otherwise, hopefully, entrepreneurial, you make something of yourself, you have a great life, but remember money doesn't make you happy. Achievement, stories, adventures, brotherhood, mateships, relationships, children, looking back, on the little things, she said. So take it easy and tell me why you believe that civilian life is more peaceful than military. Because I beg to differ. And that's Kaz in the trenches. Out to you. See ya. So, there we go, team. I stand absolutely firm on the fact that those who not necessarily throw dispersions, but throw cold water on the career of someone considering a military career, don't see it from the perspective of someone that has a calling to do something that's every fiber of their soul, just like it is for Fred, uh, Fred Hollows to save the eyesight of those in third world nations. To be a rugby league player through and through, to be someone who does what others don't do, to tread where others fear to tread, who dares wins, to understand all of their life exactly where and what they want to do. And when you get in the military, you have two families, you have your family and you have your army family. Sadly, they conflict. They conflict. There is going to be times when one family gets hurt for the other and ultimately that is when you go away, when you go away on operations, when you go away on courses, on exchanges, outfield, etc. For the family, you know, they might win you back, but then you suffer internally because there's never a real time to get out of the military that's why you see the guys in rugby league that start crying on their last day on the field, despite the fact that they know they've probably got a $400, $500, one million dollars contract waiting for them as a commentator. The money doesn't matter. It's what sets your soul. It is the herd that you see the gate close and you become the horse now that although you are surrounded by others, it's just not the same. It's not the same. Let's see what he's got to say. Uh, shush. Uh, thanks, everyone. What's going on with Shush? Doing my uh, ase uh, easement day, assessment day, I take it, on Thursday. I wish you luck. I, I do wish you luck, mate. And there's Eddie Bennett. Team, we've got an American soldier who's, uh, who's messaging here with his compadres from Syria. Eddie Bennett the fourth. What a pleasure to have you here, mate. And I'll take your hat off to those US servicemen abroad who are keeping us safe while we sleep and sometimes condemn the very people we call brothers. That doesn't come from me, but it comes from some. And I don't appreciate it because no one tends to bleed more than the US. And at the moment, the strife they're in, they deserve some friends, and they've been a good one for us. Wakey vids. You'll smash it. Shush, that's it. Bullet Attack, that's a good name. Bullet, how long have you been here for, mate? Have you changed your name? Is this something new? Chunky, I don't even know if we've spoken yet, mate. I've been waiting to uh, to have a conversation with you on the bat phone. You know, the, with the fitness cards, for those that don't know. I haven't even got one here. Is it still going to show up here? Wait a sec, no. Nope, nope, it's not showing up there. 
So guys and gals, we've got the fitness cards. We've got a whole bunch of scores coming in, you know, especially today. And there's some really competitive times. And I've got to add mine to them soon. Navy veteran. Hello, sailor. Love how we're still wearing the same clothes. Truly a part of the great unwashed <laughs> hashtag veteran. Bam. Best of luck, Shush. Shush. Uh, missed that one. IQ Neck, good to have you here, mate. Eddie Bennett sometimes. I'm not sure what that one's about. Dave D, good day, Ed B Jr. Can we get some thumbs up for Ed B Jr. who is using his time in Syria to reach out to us? All the best, mate, to you and your dad and to Chantel, your mum. You know, I bet sometimes you wish you were playing Xbox, but I tell you what, as soon as you leave Syria you, and go on holidays... Rockle, etc. You're going to want to be back with the boys. That's just the way it is. It's not a competition. It's just the way it is. Now, when I see touches of uh, Josh Reforms, 343, duty first, right on. When we see um, civilian world, I really feel for those that you could call it red pilled, you could call it uh, conservative thinking, you could call it country patriotic, you could call it. Not batshit crazy. Press like if you can, team. And so often I see people that I know when they're operating in this civilian landscape that that is not the way they think. It is not the way they talk. But they are skipping rope to make sure that you don't get cancelled by some extension of HR that can find a problem with almost anything you do. No dark humour allowed. Very feminine values, sensitivities, orientated, even on shit that's bullshit, that ain't true. That doesn't happen in the army. There's a hierarchy that is already predetermined, so there's no requirement for you to use each other like crabs over the top of each other. And there's an understanding that those with the most leadership capability are usually private soldiers, but they're not in a position for their voices to potentially be heard. You know, there is no monopoly on leadership in the military. There's a lot of it. Team members, well, when someone says, what do you have to do to be special forces? You think, well, you, you can do is be a leader because every one of them in patrol has got the potential to be a leader. Yep, that's a fact, Jack. No, I'm not trying to look like Mr. Bourne. Eddie Bennett, the fourth. Uh, okay, I'm sure he told you the address too if you want to send uh, anything, Lauren. I will send you the fist of Adonis. <laughs> Careful, Kaz, sounds like you might be talking sense again. Man, That that's the great thing, IQ Neg. We get to, to get on here and just speak the voice of reason. Good song sometimes. Um, and it's so important because I'm not just in a position where I'm trying to help people with their life mission to join the military, to live their life in actual fact. And the goal is not to get overseas and hurt another human being. It is to live your life. It is so that every day is fundamentally different than the day before as you were paid to collect experiences while also being prepared to protect the shores that are girt by sea. I want you to have the best life. Like I said in the video, it owes you absolutely nothing. But if you wait too long, it's too late. You'll get the golden handcuffs where you can't get away from the mines, where you can't get away from the qualification that you haven't even paid the hex bill for. What I want you to do is live. That's what I want you to do. Rock and roller. Uh, great to see you live, brother. Great to see a rock and roller in the crowd. Love it. Subscribe if you haven't already, team. You'd be crazy not to. We're the longest running, smallest channel on YouTube, I swear. Bradley uh, Rule 09, you don't get much downtime as a soldier in the army. I've heard from other soldiers saying there is no downtime, really. Mate, Bradley, that is fake news, my friend. I'm glad to tell you. You know, there is not too many careers other than fly and fly at work and being a fireman or a policeman that gives you as much time off as the army. I'll explain. When you're in the army, and it's a good question, I'm not mocking you, mate, you will get six to eight weeks off at Christmas, which is called the BRL, which is Brigade uh, Recreation Leave. They will even pay the incidentals, the fuel bill for you to drive down to where you're from if that's where your next of kin is, i.e. from Townsville down to South Australia. If you get a trailer and take that, you'll probably get an extra grand thrown in. Sell the trailer on the way. Buy it back again on the way back. Um, but 
You'll also get September leave. You'll also get uh, Easter leave. You'll get all the time off that children get off at school so that you can spend that time with your children to get that life balance. Not to mention, when you're not outfield, it's not uncommon for you to get knocked off early. Anytime you want, if you've got a good excuse, you can say, hey boss, Sarge, section commander, Robbo, can I please have uh, the afternoon off? I need to go get something done. Off you go, mate. Get it done. It's in our best interest that you have as much time off as possible while preparing for the next hit out to get your administration done so that it doesn't become a, a, a problem that comes and bites us on the ass later. Thursdays used to be for sport. Now, I remember giving people the day off when the Xbox came out so they could go and get it out of their system. Yep. There's a lot of time off, team. Bullet attack, the channel is way too underrated. Maybe. Sometimes I wonder what's going on. Uh, Kaz, my card declined, but I, I, uh, I get paid next week. Chunky. It's not about the money, mate. It's about getting the journey. The reason we have, um, the reason why we have Patreon is so that there is some level of, uh, what do you call it, a barrier of entry to get into because otherwise I won't be able to have enough time that I can give up for those that, take the, the step to actually sign on to Patreon, get their fitness card, get their one-on-one -on -one communication with Kaz Boyer, the bat phone, and be able to um, give himself a fighting chance, you know, when there's a lack of those that see their, their journey before them. Uh, Joshy Four Signal, Signal's cause a great core. James, hi, I want to join the ADF Army. The Dream is Second Commando Regiment, so you've got to go to infantry first, okay? But one step at a time, I'm in Army Cadets as a corporal and have been uh, to Army bases at Nogra and Oakley. But do you have any tips? James, once you're old enough, mate, put your application in, take your time, it's on your side, finish your schooling if you can. It's not necessarily to give you something to fall back on, it's to allow your skeletal system to become scaffolding that can support the modern body armour ensemble and also the pack that it will carry. That's the fact. And I wish you well. BK95, you get a lot of holidays time off, but uh, also a lot of time away potentially. Yep, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Kaz. Interesting to hear that. No worries, Bradley. No, and you can have a good time. And you know what? This is a weird one too. No sooner does the soldier go on leave than two weeks later, like I said in the video earlier, you want to come home. You want to see what everyone else is doing. There is a completely different experience for someone with a family that is in the army, especially if they're in infantry, as opposed to someone who's in infantry that is single or just has a girlfriend. Completely different world. Completely different life. When you move to the battalion, don't move your missus up straight away, even though your ball sack is saying, I need you here. I need you tonight. Give her some respect. You don't know what's going to happen. When you get to the battalion, you might be going straight away on a two-week hit out to somewhere where the climate doesn't mean acclimation for you. So let yourself get in a position where you can create a nest. And then she can come up and then you're giving her and her family and your chances of success with her some success. Yep. Because if you do it wrong, you'll end up like Kaz. Uh, Dave D. James, focus on being good at what you need to be good at today and take those steps one at a time. Work on fitness. Absolutely. When in doubt, if you have a job team, you have no reason to not get on Patreon for the coffee a month and support me supporting others. Bought a dollhouse for some kids today. We bought $100 worth of Lego for other kids a couple of days ago. We've got a video coming out tomorrow for lovely Lauren as she launches her second life is about to occur, and it's very, very exciting. Um, and you'll see that tomorrow. Um, yeah, get on board. Get on board. Help those who are helping you and helping those that defend you while you're sleeping in the future. Uh, what's your unit, James? Okay, Navy veteran. I was so much more stressed about life as a civilian. Now I don't need to worry about my rent, health insurance, and I get free food a lot of the time. We had a mental lapse, but the ADF fixed me up. Doesn't get much better than that, Popeye. Well done. G'day from Rockhampton. Travis Hutt, related to Pizza Hut. Um, Travis, I can tell you, mate, uh, 
Rocky is one of those milestones you get to when you drive from Townsville, about 800 kilometres or, or so uh, south of Townsville, where you think, oh, I'm never going to get to Sydney or Newcastle. It's killing me. But Rocky is a, um, it's like the biggest forgotten city in Australia, I reckon. Uh, Lawrence says, agreed, sworn defender. They don't deserve the tattoo if they can't take the pain. There you go. You're not supposed to drink before a tattoo. You're supposed to take it sweet. Hey, Bane. 343 for some more Lego blocks. Thank you very much, Bane. You know, I used to get called the Bane of my existence by my CSM. and uh, But he said it with tongue-in-cheek and he said it with affection. Thank you very much, Mr. Bane. That's 3,430 viewers worth of dineros there i really appreciate it thank you very much can we get some thumbs up to the man there with the uh the aqua blue donation the bane of our existence aussie bloke three thumbs up who's the other hand behind you i see two that are yours aussie bloke's got someone behind him <laughs> uh bullet attack yo bane thank you bane joshy fawns I don't know what everyone's been saying here. I see some deleted comments going across. Don't know what's going on. Uh, Apple, uh, App Lom Gamer. G'day, Kaz. I was wondering if Combat Logistics is any good uh, communication systems operator. They're all good, mate. It's what comes down to being you, what your personality. If you try to fake it and go into something that is not you, you'll feel like you're being pulled asunder by something that doesn't, you don't suit you. Or if you're a rugby league player and you're trying to play soccer or soccer tr playing rugby league, it ain't going to work out. Sinaj with the flowing hair. As a civilian, I may be wrong, but I feel the training for military life prepares you for chaos more than civilian life does, so that creates a large difference in perspective. Um, I think, I don't know what it is, Sinaj. There's just something about it. I think it's the fact that why complain because no one's going to listen. I think... If you complain about the pain, guess what? Everyone's sore. You know, everyone's cold. Everyone's hungry. Everyone misses home. In every soldier's notebook, when we go abroad and we're in foreign countries, return to the Jedi territory, you've got a picture of your missus, a picture of your ex-missus, your mate's wife, maybe, a picture of your dog, the motorbike. What are you going to buy when you come home? All of these things. And when you share it, with the cultures of the foreign country, then you actually make a moment where you look at each other as humans rather than different cultures. And when you look at someone who's sweeping a dirt floor with a broom, I spoke to Lauren about this today, and the father has got sandals with holes all through them, but still tucks his shirt in with pride and provides for his family, you think people with less Kids with one toy each, I would give you my whole paycheck to make your life better. But what would happen then, that would be equivalent to throwing some chips in the middle of the seagulls. You know, you don't know what's going to happen to the person you're going to help. Mm. I don't even know what that means. We got a yen moister. Mick Lay Motors from Japan, I don't even know what that is. Is that 1,220 yen? The place of sushi. I love it. I'd love to go there and go on a train. Can we get some uh, thumbs up for, uh, for Mick Lay Motors? He's been here forever. He works in Japan with exotic sports cars. Bloody good life. Mick Lay. Nutsukao. Do you look across the shores sometimes towards the red corn chip like... Is today the day? Is it going to happen today? We're going to get some spice in our life, so to speak. Mate, all the best to you, and I love having you as part of the channel, mate. You've been here forever, and I'll support whatever you're doing. And I still call Japan home. <laughs> no, no, it's Australia, but you know what I mean. Tattoos uh, aren't going to keep you warm at night. Uh, no, neither are squats. G'day, J uh, Jay, have been uh, behaving yourself. Stevie Webb, good to have you here, mate, always is. Lauren Hay, Mick Lay in Japan, thank you. Mouser, amen. We've got a religious individual there. Sworn Defender, how do you go with your uh, with your testing? Uh, some yen on you, mate. I see what you've done then. Space Wizard, very smart. Um, what we've got to do is 
Mike Shore as well. Hey, Plumber Coast. Adam Nagura. G'day, mate. How are you going with your fitness card, buddy? What we need to do is make sure that we remember that one day we could be the one screaming into the night. And there may not be a response because there might be multiple issues happening to multiple cultural coalition partners simultaneously in a worldwide event. That's the scary thing. Okay? So we need to make Australia strong. We spoke the other day about national service. I spoke about those that are qualified to a high level of expertise with firearms being allowed to, once again, buy them. So that a threat force to Australia domestically doesn't exactly know where they can hide and where the fight back will begin. Where you can have an armed militia, so to speak, where you can say, let's get going, boys, and drop a, drop a tailgate. Everyone get in the mog. You with a sore back. Build a ramp and climb up it, you son of a bitch. Jack Cartridge Graham. That is 8,000 viewers worth of dinero there. Green, the same color as my pool when I had to look after it. To Jack, or spelt Jick with a New Zealand accent. Nutsu cow, sir. Thank you very much. Arcane, the sworn defender. It was kind of her idea to push me into it other than other things. She knows it's a dream of mine and super supportive. Bam. James, hey, another quick question. Can you join ADF Infantry if you have glasses? I believe so. I believe so. I really don't know that one well. Chris Isaac. Somebody's crying. How long have we been going for? 31 minutes. Dean Tonkin. Hey, Kaz, thanks for all your videos. They helped me get through the enlistment process. I'm 17 and leave for Kapooka on the 5th of September. That is soon into a fitter armament role, similar to what my dad did, mate. Well done, Dean. I share the name, Dean. And I wish you luck, mate, because your life is about to change. There's going to be so many that are proud of you. We've got talk by one of our uh, guys in the comments. I got a, a message from him uh, last night saying it's the hardest thing he's ever done. He doesn't know if he can go on, but he doesn't have a choice because now he's been to the channel. Can't be a quitter unless you're a smoker. Uh, Bane, is it possible to take your vehicle most of the IETs? Not if you go to infantry. I don't know about, uh, also, how much time between March out at Kapuka and IETs. Nothing. There's no days in between. Um, let me explain that one to you, Bane. You join the army. You go to Kapuka. You will finish on the Friday. Okay, you'll go down to the Victoria Hotel. Okay, get on the piss a little bit. Be home by 10 o'clock unless you've got family that you can stay with at Kapuka. Wagga wagga, not a racial slur. And then what'll occur is on Monday morning, straight up, you'll be on a bus if you're going to infantry and you'll go all the way to the School of Infantry that day, ready to do a BFA, not a PFA, the next morning. And it matters how you go. So no time. At the School of Infantry, I don't believe it's changed. The law is, or the rule's almost always been there. It changed while I was actually at uh, the School of Infantry as an IT. And that is there is no driving by law while you're an IET's. The reason is they cannot afford for you to get into a situation with the courts that can create an administrational drama that can get you back squatted and waste the government's, yours, and the military's time. So no driving on IETs. Sworn Defender. Um, mine thinks it's a fad. I'll be out of uh, in five minutes. Doesn't realise how passionate I'm about. Then Sworn Defender, then you let your actions be the decider, mate. Don't let anyone get in your way. This is your life. You only get one. There's so many songs on it. It's my life. It's now or never. How do I know if army life is for me without actually joining? It's my dream job and I'm now 23. Just still not sure if it really is for me. Kind of scared to join. We know what? Bradley, you'll know in four years, mate. Arcane. Arcane magic, Kaz, keep up the good work, helping, inspiring people. Nutsu cow, we've got the Hurry Krishna Orange, 20,000 people's worth of viewership coming. Fantastic. And team, if you're in Patreon and memberships, etc., you don't need to be slinging, you know, donations, to tell you the truth. All right? We're just happy to have you here. All right? But it, I guess that makes you feel more invested, and that's good. 
Um, members, we need the members, which is separate to uh, Patreon. Okay, the members, let's come up with a perk for you guys. What is it you want? What do you want? What do you really, really want? What do you really, really want? We're going to get Lauren on in a couple more seconds. We've got the Spice Wizard. Did some magic. 8,000 dineros. 8,000 viewers worth of uh, dineros there. Thank you very much. BB Wong. Guys, better to think clearly before enlist because ADF is not great as you think. Uh, never have uh, five-star medical treatment. You will now uh, know clear when you have injuries. No one cares. BB Wong, I think you are Wong on this one. I think you're Wong. There's never been a better time to be in the military for medical reasons. For the simple fact now, when I went through, everything was done on paperwork. Now, everything is done digitally, digitally kept. I've never had bad medical um, treatment apart from one time. One time. And that was when a military person who was working in the hospital let me down by asking me to divulge information that was extremely personal to my situation and well-being and then did nothing with it. And then there was a Captain Clifton, his name was, who let me sit and give him a two-hour spiel on my post-traumatic stress situation and then did nothing about it. Didn't, don't think he passed it up either. It was a very weird situation. But other than that, mate, the medical restriction, no one can overrule that except the doctor. That's it. So they will look after you. They will give you that ability. You know, there is some horror stories. Sure, there is. You know, but no different to anyone else going to a doctor. I think that the, the way the military looks after you, what else can give you something that says you will not be going outfield? You will not be going to PT. You will be getting paid to sit back and do logistical sort of work until you're in a point where we're not going to further hurt your carcass. Mr. Buckaroonie, Kaz, found out today that the ADF is in a poor state. The Navy can only man two out of nine Seahawks on the ships. God help us if we go to war. My plan for that Buckaroonie is national service rearming individuals that are already trained like yourself, you know, and from there they need to get rid of the wokeness, they need to get rid of the quotas, and they need to start preparing for the day that it rains because that day could very well be coming. BB Wong, you're wrong now. ADF Medical is outsourced to Bupa. The nurses actually abused uh, me with the commander. There's, mate... I've never been abused. So, okay, if that happened, that happened. But, mate, you're, you're saying that this is a, a common thing that's happening to people. In 24 years, I didn't see it or experience it, mate. I don't, I don't know uh, what your uh, situation is, and I'm sure there's two sides of the story, and I know that people don't yell at you or abuse you for no reason. All right. Uh, sure am, Kaz. Can an SAS officer go to combat with the soldiers after they leave as a platoon commander? Well, you'll be a captain if you're a, a commander in uh, special air service, mate, or commandos. And their job is a planner, you know, but their job is not to door kick. They're worth too much money, mate. They're irreplaceable, almost. Thanks for helping me out, Kaz. Uh, Aplom Gamer. Not sure how to actually explain, uh, pronounce that one, but I believe that's the one. 5,000 viewers. Thank you very much. Not too cow. Uh, we've got Arcane there. He's welcome to the great unwashed. You just became British. Well done, sir. And Mr. Buckaroon, you don't need to do that at all, mate. We're the ones that are supposed to give that to you. That looks like Mr. Buckaroon, he's throwing me a blood nose there. You know, with unoxygenated blood coming from the snores. Uh, Mr. Buckaroonie, what we're going to do, I'd normally throw Lauren on now, but what I'm going to do, because we've got a lot of Buckaroonie fans on here as well. Sorry, Lauren, no disrespect, though. But I'm going to see Mr. Buckaroonie. I'm going to thank him for his donation. And what we're going to do is see if he has the guile to answer his phone. The servant of the nation. Listen to the fear. 
I can hear it inside. Hi, Kaz. Put a thumbs up if you're a fan of Mr. Buckarooney, team. And a, <laughs> and a thumbs down if you hate him because of his hairline. Yeah, it's getting the hairline's getting further back, Kaz. Well, that's all right, mate. That's all right, mate. You should have seen me getting ready to shot put this computer just as the session was about to start. Should I join the army or not? If the question is, Bradley, if you need to ask it, then you need to go in there and see for yourself. And in four years, you'll be a better version than what you are now. Absolutely. When in doubt, get on Patreon and you and I have a phone call on this phone and we'll sort that one out. Mr. Buckarooney, thank you very much for that donation. You never need to do that. Having All said that, day. I'm going to spend it on raw chicken and eat it at a bus stop. <laughs> mate, I'm sure the, the Kaz bloody channel, mate, will spend it wisely. You always do, mate. Mate, when you see, what we're, when you see what's happening tomorrow... The launch of someone else's second career, you know, um, it's fantastic. Oh, look at all these people that like you. It's bullshit. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Tell Go us what's guys, happening. How are you? Tell us what's happening with you. You tell us, mate. Kaz, we just Ros and I just got back from Harvey Bay, mate. We ran a camping event down there. About two hundred and fifty people turned up from all around Australia. You know how I roll, Kaz. Did stuff for charity. We raised twelve grand for charity, mate. Bloody Harvey Bay Animal Shelter. I, I got a pilot that does angel flight, uh, flying cancer cancer patients down to Brisbane. A charity for kids. A young boy scout that's going over to represent Australia. The Australian Boy Scouts in South Korea next year. We raised uh, nine hundred dollars for him as well, mate. So, yeah, just down there having a great time. Everyone went out. What's the whales? What a fantastic time it was, Kaz. How dare you? Were they nice girls, but? <laughs> Mate, it was you, the girls. We put a wine night on uh, Saturday night. The girls went off. We had to get the bouncers in to control them. They were going ape shit. <laughs> bouncers slash strippers. <laughs> um, mate, we, we're so proud of what you've achieved, mate, to have been in the military and then to have gone to the police force and then to go for the prison guard, you've done the Holy Trinity, and now after all of that, you're doing charity work. Mate, yeah. you deserve a cape, and you know what? I'll tell you, I'm going to let you know in advance that I've got a surprise plan for you, mate. It's going to take a while, yeah. but you're going to get your time. Dino, welcome to the voice of the people. Dino, love your name. Wait a second. Not too cow. They don't make hands like they used to. Um <laughs> Dino, welcome. Can we all welcome Dino as the new member there? The talk. Um, can we get some thumbs up there in the chat if you want to see a uh, several videos that will be Zoom calls? There'll be productions, not streams, where Lauren, Kaz, Buckarooney, and Night Stalkers, and uh, potentially Sinaj and some others that won't be. Um, uh, compromised uh, compromised when it uh, comes to uh, speaking with the military career that you'd yeah. like to, to get on and um, talk about events where you can agree to the uh, to what it's about but Mr. Buckring will give you a chance to be part of the, the Brady Bunch group and be able to communicate on what you think about topical issues would you be willing to do that? Absolutely, Kaz. You know I'm always up for a chat on the in, in the trenches with Kaz Channel, mate. I'm always up for it, and, mm. mate. I'm passionate about it. And I, I love what you're doing. We're getting these young kids into the military, mate. I love it. I love what you're doing. And you know it ain't perfect, but the alternative is if we don't do it, some of these guys and gals are gonna go astray. Wait two seconds. We've got Riley here. Welcome to the Great Unwashed, Riley Jenkins, who's now become British, the unwashed. Bastardo. <laughs> now, Coca-Cola, that is the British toothpaste. <laughs> British toothpaste? Not all heroes oh wear God. capes, says Rock, rock and Roller. <laughs> yeah. oh, I wonder if Robin's watching tonight. Elijah, uh, good yeah. to have you here, mate. Mate, um, yeah, today we just did, we did a video today um, and we just explained that there is a chaos that comes with peace by being in the military, that it's so hard to explain to our loved ones and our family members that 
there is a clash of not clans but families where men have a hard time sometimes separating their loyalty for military and that with family, whether it be the person they're sleeping with or their mum and dad. Yeah. Um, and once someone's been in the army, it's in your soul forever. You know. Exactly, yep. And I don't know where any other career that does that. You know, that has an equivalent to uh, Anzac Day, etc., whatever, where 60 years later, you still want to get with those dudes, you know, and cover exactly the same story with, yeah. with some blemish. Yep, exactly right, Kaz. It, it's, um, it, it never leaves you, mate. You can take the man out of the army. You can't take the army out of the man, as they say. It, it's true. And you know what? This is a funny one, too, for Dave D and some of the others. When you meet, and uh, this is part of the, the uh, what would you call it, the beauty of it. You'll see an officer that made it to general, you know, that you knew when you were a private, section commander, yeah. sergeant, warrant officer. Yeah. And when that guy sees you, once you're both out of the army or you're out of the army or he's out of the army, they will treat you like family. They go back in time and remember what your contribution was to their career. They yeah. walk amongst the gods when they're inside that base. But once we're out yep. in uniform outside the base, then we're wearing our character as our uniform. Return. Exactly no right. one screams in the night without getting a response. Oh, mate. It, uh, you're dead right, Cass. Can I tell you a quick story, mate? Do it. When, mate, I was... Um, First Signal Regiment was one of my units. I was in Signals Corps, as you know. Anyway, they were doing a big family open day up here in far north Queensland. And my son happened to be the recce mech of one SIG regiment. So he followed in the unit that I uh, that I served in. Uh, my son was a recce mech in Ramey. So was anyway, my dad. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I turned up to... They, they had all their cam nets deployed. And it was a big open day for the, the civilians. Anyway, I, I turned up. And I was a copper at the time, mate. I was in a cop car. I was in my cop uniform. I turned up at the First Signal Regiment who was doing a big family open day and I, I ran into someone and it was a female RSM and I, I'd never met this girl before and I said, who's the CO? And she goes, Dan Webster. And I said, I used to be a lance corporal with Dan Webster. He was a technician and I was a QE. We were lance jacks together. Many, many years later, he was a lieutenant colonel, commanding officer, First Signal Regiment. So I went in under his cam net, and he goes, Buck Rogers. He goes, hey, I, I shook his hand. Anyway, there was a couple of majors under the cam net with him, and he goes, you want a brew, Buck? And I said, yeah, Dan, thanks. And he goes to this major, he goes, mate, mate, Buck a brew. And I was like in my police uniform and that. And anyway, me and Dan were talking about old times, mate. It was like he wasn't an officer. He just reverted back to when he was a lance corporal with me. That, that's how they work, mate. They just remember back to, I don't know, it was just, he was a lieutenant colonel. He'd done very well for himself. As yep. soon as he saw me, mate, he reverted back to lance corporal and remembered all the good times we had together as bloody lance jacks together. But we had a, a Colonel Wilson was the commander of Sector West. Um, he was our CO, big, big man. You know, and he'd run and sweat, and you'd hear him snoring while he was running. Um, uh, but he'd be running in the middle of the day, and people going, the commanding officer is absolutely like an Egyptian slave. You know, you know, he worked so hard, and when he went to leave to the chagrin of, if that's a word, yeah. the battalion by choice lined the battalion, and there were soldiers crying when he left. They loved yeah. him that much. But what happened was. One of the uh, the second Timor trip, Aussie, Oz, uh, we were at uh, Bobinaro, Balaba, yes. Bobinaro, I think it was, and I had to clear an airfield, and he was landing Commander Sector West, and he had the the RSM of the New Zealand Army that was landing, came out, big man, and he got out, and straight away the uh, sorry general saw me and went, oh, Caswell, Caswell. And came over and, and shook my hand. He remembered me, what I'd done for the battalion working while he was the commanding officer. And he said, don't come and waste your time listening to officers, to the RSM of the New Zealand Army. He goes, Kaz will look after you. He'll get you a drink, Kaz. Can you take him around to meet the men? And he goes, I've got to go and do what officers do and go and talk to officers. 
And uh, he goes, make sure I see you before I leave, mate. I went, no worries. He is and one of the best men I've ever worked with. Yeah, Major McCrone, well, another one. Dick yeah. Parker, another one. You know, there's so many of the people that we worked with and now all end up being the Special Forces Commanders in SASR yes. and Commandos. Yeah, it's it's good to see, mate. Eh? Like young young Louis and that, that you know, I used to play rugby. I was a, a staff sergeant wire officer in 1st Signal Regiment. And some of the young lieutenants that I played rugby with for first one sig regiment, yep, they were young Louis, mate. They were just out of, out of the factory, and then you, you all these years later, and you think they made it all the way to lieutenant colonel, yep, and colonel. Like just, geez, it was good to see, mate. You know, and that and that is more and more common now. Uh, like Nicole says, the NCOs can make uh, the best officers. You know, it's only if they go in there with no ego. You need to drop yeah. the ego and remember that the soldier is always looking and you deserve their trust as much as they deserve yours, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, mate, we're going to jump off here now because I'm going to put the video on again to finish this, That what this is all about, the summary of this, um, yeah. and, and say thank you to everyone. But can you tell us what's going next for you or is it just a well-planned rest for you and your mate, lovely lady? Kaz, you were Mate, we just got back from a big uh, charity event in Harvey Bay. Yep. In a week's time, we're heading down to Brisbane. We're picking up our off-road caravan. Yep. Um, and, and we're coming back, and we're just going to take it easy until the end of the year. And then, mate, at start of next year, straight after Christmas, Ros and I are on the road for 12, 15, 18 months. Two seconds. The big on the road school. again. Bucko <laughs> can't wait to put his G-string <laughs> on the road again. Mate, we'll be there and we'll catch up with you somewhere down there on on the, the coast of New South Wales somewhere. But Roz and I, mate, we're, get, we're starting to plan it now. Roz is retiring at the end of the year. I'm already retired, as you know. Yep. And we're going to do the big lap of this great country, mate. And that's what, while we've got our health, mate, that's that's what it's all about. Just what? bloody. And we're going to catch up. We went to Cactus Jacks the other night. In Cactus Jacks! Do you know Cactus Jacks accounts for 10% of Mexican drownings as they try to come to Australia for the authentic Australian Mexican cuisine? <laughs> Not true, but I say it. Another one too, mate, without, while I'm being disrespectful, your lovely wife, Roz, she's from um, Torres Straits, yeah? Yeah, Torres Strait Islander, mate. Yes. Okay, well, when you come down here, I'm taking you out for a seafood dinner so she can actually taste beautiful seafood when it's cooked properly. Not over the coals. I'm going to take you to a beautiful restaurant. You won't need a collar. Don't panic. That's all right. As long as we can wear thongs, cowboy shorts, and a t-shirt, we'll be we'll fit in. Good to go. All right, mate. Well, I'll let you go. Can we get some Good thumbs on, up and some respect for Mr. Buckarooney? What he does, he does so much for so many others, and it'd be great for one day for you to hear what happened uh, with the um, his footy side, what they made for him. That put tears in the big fella's eyes. Oh, mate, yeah. That was incredible, Kaz. We'll catch up again soon, mate, eh? No worries, mate. And we'll uh, we'll give you the heads up on what the topics are going to be so people can see your face in a more relaxed environment. Good stuff, mate. And all the best to all the bloody, uh, all your community out there, mate. Bloody hats off to you. You're doing a great job. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks for ringing. See okay, you later. see you, buddy. Don't look under your Bye. bed. Hillary Clinton's there. <laughs> Bye, mate. Hey, Trump, he's in a bit of shit, mate. No, he's not, mate. He's fine. When yeah, they, he's when like... they, when they did this raid, mate, I'm wondering what happened over here. They don't want you to look at. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what comes out of this. Anyway, that's for another story. Okay, mate. See you, buddy. See, see you, mate. Bye. Okay, team. Let us know. Thumbs up if you want to hear Lauren's voice. Okay, we've got about another seven minutes to go. We'll try to smack on to the one hour mark. And uh, we'll be good to go. Daz, good to have you here, mate. Uh, he does Bane. Uh, he does Bane, but uh, it's time for all the uh, patron members. I'm not sure what that one's about. Mouser Buck uh, would know a legend, RSM. Uh, Yatesy Macca, Macca Yatesy, not sure. Uh, um, Bane, I can call you anytime you want, mate. Text me right now, and I will actually speak to you tonight. Leroy Majors. Has a little wealth of knowledge. I always see the comments that are nice about me, don't I? If you're considering joining the Australian uh, military, join the Patreon if you'd like a chat, folks. Guys, it is a, an absolute privilege that I get to speak to people 
and actually hear their journey as it unfolds, but then also hear how happy they are when their family hears the news when they get through. Um, Bainey, it's all good, mate. He is. Uh, it's always good to have a Bane in the Patreon. He's been here for a while. I've sent you your card, haven't I, mate? Let us know. And I am willing to speak to you tonight, Senor Bane. Just give me the message because there is so many messages that come in daily. Jack Cartridge Graham. How many grams in the cartridge? Sold out, Kaz. We're going to put this video on again for those that came in a little bit late because it's important. Um, and after that, what we might do is look like either getting out of here or putting Lauren on if she wants. What do you think you're doing? Hey, hey, get out of there. It's a captain's chair. Rat. <laughs> Doesn't get easier the further I run. It gets harder to carry the weight of what I've done. I am speaking from experience. Hey Tim, how are we going? It is Kaz from the trenches with Kaz, and I'm here to ask you, how can it possibly be that the combat trained soldier finds more peace in the chaos of serving the nation, in being abroad, in being in Tully, in existing in adverse conditions for prolonged periods of time with no comfort, with no internet, without no phone, without the good foods, the things that he loves and the people, and even their dog. How can that be more peaceful? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you know that where you are is non-political. You understand where you are in the chain of command. You're not fighting over that. It is not contested. You understand what the mission is. You're expecting it to be hard. Moments of absolute, uh, what would we say? Moments of 100% red line activity followed by Long periods of waiting, anticipating, with nothing occurring. Boredom. But what can you do? All you can do is turn to your left or right and make conversation, old school conversation, with your battle buddy that's beside you. Understand that every day will be different. And when it is more of the same, it might be harder, it might be easy. But you're getting paid. If you get hurt, it's free medical. And it's done during work hours fitness hard daily in work hours dental work hours time off so often we find that with the six weeks off that you get at the end of the year the two weeks at easter the two weeks in september etc rough ballpark figures that no sooner do you give your pledge to your family to be there to spend time with them but you're already itchy as hell to get back on the road and go and spend time with your family, second family, your compadres, because there's no politics. You've got dark humor, swearing, talking about the things you can't talk about. There's no tiptoeing on the family freak eggshells that you need to keep away from certain topics. It's all you know, basically on and above board. So that is why I could imagine there's, there's no falsities in the military. You're all there for the same reason. You're guided by normally the same capitalistic, adventure-seeking, brotherhood-loving, patriotic fueled lifestyle, but can't exactly tell you why. Is it because we love the country? Is it because we love the adventure? Is it because we love our mates? Or we just like knowing that diversity of activity is more um, important than equity and diversity in a fake civilian landscape where you're told to believe in something despite the fact that you know it's full of shit. You just have to get do it. You have to get told this is the way we have to think. To fit in today's HR department society, I don't understand it. Yeah, when you go overseas for six months, eight months, year, whatever, no sooner do you get home, 
then you wish you were back with your buddies. Drinking Coke in a glass bottle that's already had a thousand customers. Yeah. Getting up Ravelli, tasting the countryside, the air, the different people, the cultures, the activities, and the, the smell of the spices and the pungent smell of the people. It's about making stories, it's about living life, it's about having an adventure. Everything in the civilian world is saving up their time, saving up their shekels to do. You're getting it, not just for free, but you're being paid to do it. Hanging out of a helo at high altitude, with the doors kicked open, hanging out. You know, with someone behind you giving you pride, thanks Trevor Cameron, scared shitless of heights is Kaz. I want you to have a life that is different. I don't want you to say, I want to go to university. I want to hear, this is my dream, but I've got to go to university to get there. STEM, maybe. That I want to go and I want to be a carpenter. I want to be a boiler maker. I want to be a dentist. No one wants to be a dentist, it just pays well. I want to be a vet. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, people that love the animals most want to go where they see the most animal suffering. Huh, confusing. I want to be a doctor, why? Spend a life researching, reading books, smelling of rich mahogany. I don't know. It's up to you, the life journey, but don't get to 51 years old where I am now and then look back and say, I wish I'd done something different. Because I tell you now, life is about living and life owes you nothing. Squat. So get out there, live your life, and remember where you go for an apprenticeship where you go for university, where you go for TAFE, that's just the conduit to get you to something that you'd better get right. Otherwise, hopefully, entrepreneurial, you make something to yourself, you have a great life, but remember money doesn't make you happy. Achievement, stories, adventures, brotherhood, mateships, relationships, children. Looking back on the little things, she said, so take it easy and tell me why you believe that civilian life is more peaceful than military. Because I beg to differ. And that's Kaz in the trenches. Out to you. See ya. Oops. There he is. So let's make sure that we also do a call out to a very special guy called Donaldson. Not enough energy to get someone pregnant, but he's almost there. <laughs> so Dono, if you ever watch, all the best, mate. I look forward to speaking to you. And Blacksy, from over in Western Australia, I won't say his job, but he's not a dentist. All the best to you too, mate. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you on the telephone. Um, we're going to whack Lauren on for a couple of minutes, team, because I think it's only fair. She does a great job as moderator there. Um, hey, Siri. Call Elon Musk. I don't see Elon Musk in your contacts. Oh, Who shit. would you like to call? I must have him under a new number. Lauren is shining. I don't see an app for that. You'll need to download one. Uh-oh, uh something's wrong. Uh, something's wrong. Hey, Siri, call Lauren is shining. Calling Lauren is shining home. <laughs> Guys and gals, I really like the way we did that video to be able to get the summary of what it's about so we can go back to answering your questions. I like it. Thank you. Hello. Oh, I call my stars. That's my romantic Hello. voice. <laughs> it's so smooth. So we've got a big day for you tomorrow for those that are still in the chat. Yeah, huge. It's a warning order as to let people know that we have projects always on the move. And now that we've got Sanaj and Mr. Buckaroonie saying that they're willing to be on the uh, Brady Bunch gallery, that means we can actually have Team Kaz, Team Lauren, Team Buckaroonie, Team Sanaj. So everyone yeah. can actually feel like, you know what? It's one thing to be a member and it's called Voice of the People, but how about I get on and be the Voice of the People and then step up and actually be someone that is able to communicate the way you think from whatever realms of life. I don't think... You're better because you're in the army. It just means that you're closer to the way I think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's true. No, it's heaps of fun. We always have fun when we're playing Brady Bunch. We do. And, and Sonara said yes, he's in? Yeah, I think he said yes. 
I don't know. He should be anyway. You're in, aren't you, son? I'm sure he will be. Hey, quick question. Plumber Coast, hey, casual Patreon members, if they are training at Kapuka and their partner is at home, having a hard time, are you happy to call a partner and check in? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Mate, and that they're is... welcome here too. And, and that goes for never think, team, that I am all about the Patreon member or the member joining the military. I'm team you. If you say your missus is with you all the way, then by all means, when you ring up, have it on loudspeaker. Let her ask questions too. You know, absolutely no problem. Lightfoot, I cannot say civilian life is better than military. No. No, no. no. No, it's a good, it's a great job, even beside being a career, you know, your day-to-day life, the benefits you get are really great. Look, there is times, Lauren, where I think most people turn up with a little bit of stress on their mind going, here we go, as they go to work. Unless I've done something wrong, every day I turned up to work, I turned up, yeah, this is awesome. Hey, Robbo, how you going, Macca? And you hear, fuckhead. Get yelled yeah. out from across. The, are they talking to me this time? Yeah, yeah. There was yeah. always there was always something happening. There was always a bit of fun. I've turned up to to brawls happening. Yeah, you know? I I remember the fantastic like you know, depending on what game console had come out, there'd be fantastic tournaments. That's right, especially for the Golden Gun, Nintendo sixty four. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, so Plumber Coast, I hope that answers your question, mate. Absolutely, mate. More than happy yeah. to speak to the, the ladies. Yeah, for sure. And and they are always welcome in here in the chat also. We will look after her for you. KP. <laughs> mate, if, if that's what it takes, my man, you know, I don't think I'd be there. <laughs> I don't think I'd be welcome to tell you the truth. Leroy, uh, I work in a call centre. We get some calls now and then. You cannot escape uh, life getting difficult. That's it. You can't, exactly. You know what? I was talking to Senior William, who's about to be an officer in yep. January. Fantastic. Yep. Lovely bloke, big guy, footy player, absolutely, um, what would you call it? He is, um, what do you say? He's tender in the way he thinks. Tender? He, he's like absolutely open for... Other ideas, like mouth closed, ears open, but not yeah. in an unconfident kind of way. Yeah. And we were communicating yeah. before about people when they give you a horror story about what happens in the military with an injury. And I'm going, well, in rugby league, you know, there is people that go an entire career with minimum injuries. There's beautiful women in MMA that don't have a scar on their face. Yeah. There is no one on earth can tell you what your career will be until you have one. But the alternative is if you don't, what else are you going to say no to in life because you don't have a safety net because it doesn't promise perfect outcomes? Exactly. Nothing Nothing in life is guaranteed anyway. Not much you know, and other some than of, And some of the, like some of the cons, like there was that chap earlier in the chat, I've forgotten his name, who had had a bad experience. Now, that is not the... Um, average experience of life in the ADF and I can promise you that because if it was I'd be outraged but those things like um, bullying in workplace and abuse and that that couldn't happen out in civilian world in fact maybe even more look there's a thing that a lot of guys don't understand put a thumbs up if you agree with me here team because there's a lot of guys with very robust backgrounds here a man never gets taught men's rules or if you do it's by your father who will communicate with you if you don't understand the rules if you don't understand the way men communicate that there is a low threshold for violence if you don't accept the terms or the tone in which you're being spoken it doesn't matter whether you're a candlestick maker baker whether you're a tradie or whether you're in the military police whatever you can get a smack in the mouth because yep. you've overstepped it and called someone out because men are about reputation. That's exactly. what we're about. You exactly. Know? And the ADF has great systems in place for even worst case scenarios. Yep. And the last thing you want to do is feel butt sore, make a massive case out of something, then find out later you were the sensitive one. But it's too late to stop the ball from rolling. Um, 
Bane working civilian at Coles is death by 1,000 paper cuts. Uh, 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 just using it as a test of mental strength. But now that's what, mate, there is nothing wrong with side exactly. hustle or the hustle until you get what you need. Bailey's exactly. hat's here. He's thrown his hat. It went through the window of the barn, landed on Daz, which makes Daz his home. <laughs> Um, let's look at getting out of here because it is getting a little bit later for people. I've got to ring my little girl sure. and then I've got to ring Bean of my existence, which he's not. I, no, he's not. But that was um, a fantastic video, I'd just like to say. I love the way it was edited. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've, I've worked on the flow. I can actually turn a video around like that fairly quick now. Um, and what yeah. that is is having multiple cameras, different angles, stack them, and then just put the cuts where it's logical, add some yep. music to it so it shows. Uh, and really, at the end of the day, the reason why we like it is because we're so um, conditioned to not be able to concentrate for long these days. You've got to, we're overstimulated. Yep. Yep. But it's exactly. a pleasure. Um, thank you very much for those who donated their time, you know, because – Time is of the essence, and it's not until you've got none you realise the wealth of it. That's uh, exactly right. It was a really great stream. Everyone was really well behaved. Everyone got a lot yeah. out of it, I think. Oh, look, it's fantastic. Um, I just wish I could hear all your voices, but it, then it would sound like uh, Wall Street. So well, they'll um, have to come and get on the Brady Bunch, won't they, then? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and that's going to be good. We've got a video coming out tomorrow. I've got another video that might be coming out after that. When I when I back to back to back videos, they'll only ever go for about ten minutes, except for the one that I encourage you to look at tomorrow, that's already uh, been created and it goes for thirty one minutes. Oh wow, does it? You know, but it's production. Yeah, I couldn't get it any less. Really? Oh, uh, that's great. Okay, well, you're the main actor. It was fun. Yeah. Okay, team, we've got to be part of something. You know, and it's great to have a voice here. And it won't be long before one of you guys is ripped out of there and being on uh, some form of Zoom call where you can communicate. And I look forward to seeing who represents, how they represent, and keep those fitness cards rolling in. I'm loving the comparisons of the times, etc. Yep, excellent. Mr. Yep, Buckrooney, every job is important. Yep, absolutely. If you don't think so... Go and have a look at an ant nest or a beehive and tell me which yep. one wasn't important in the nest. Exactly. And you, and you may have lots of different jobs and wear lots of different hats in your life and just do do them all the best you can. Yeah. I, I can understand why some people won't believe a guy that's still got so much hair in his 50s. But, yeah, uh, I know. Crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, Corey Vincent? Great stream, mate. Absolutely great to have you here, Corey. I hope you subscribe and get to keep you here, mate, because at the end of the day, it's what life's about. We're part of a herd. Let's get out of here, team. Thank you very much for the dinero, for all of those that threw some uh, some cash in. Um, and I look forward to eating some of that raw chicken from Mr. Buckaroonie. Um, see you <laughs> later. Enjoy the video tomorrow. Look forward to seeing your comments. And let's get out of here and do it to them before they do it to us. What video... Sorry, what series was that from? Do it to them before they do it to us. I'll let you know I soon. I don't know. You've got to be a bit older to know that one. All good here, uh, William. All good. See us later. I'm going to go and piss the bed. Bye. <laughs> good night. Uh. I'll let this song play through before I get out of here. Wind me up and watch me choke. It's lovely. He could fill me with feathers and break me with smoke. Ripped corn pole. Holds me till I can't breathe. And his eyes tell me things his mouth can't achieve. Me, I feel a thousand. Shoulder in my way. You see, I'm in nature. 
but I do bad things. And when you want me, well, I'll be gone. So talk to me another time. See, I don't need your recklessness because I've got. No, no, no.